Yemen in particular on Sarala has really been changing everything when it comes to West Asia. And of course, when we are talking about West Asia, we are mainly now talking about Israel's onslaught, its genocidal campaign in Gaza and Yemen, in particular on Sarala, the leading force in Yemen has been doing the most when it comes to standing in solidarity with the people who are suffering so mightily, the Palestinian people who are suffering so mightily from this campaign. So since October, since uh, Israel decided to wage this genocidal campaign, Ansarallah has stepped up and, of course, enforced a blockade of the Red Sea. Of course, the Red Sea is one of the most important lifelines for all things world trade. And so this has had a huge impact on the global economy, but in particular, it has caused panic amongst the Western powers, the United States backing Israel. It has caused panic among these forces to the point where they had to come up with a, an operation, Prosperity Guardian, in order to stop Ansarallah. And they have failed dramatically. The United States and its Western allies have been unable to stop the blockade. Indeed, it has only accelerated. So in recent days, okay, in recent days, we have had, okay, we have had, here's the Times of Israel confirming that the Ansarullah forces have launched a cruise missile that hit the Iliad port uh, this past Monday of March 19th. 2024. The Ansarallah claims to target a Marshall Islands flagged fuel tanker headed for Saudi Arabia as it passed through the Red Sea shipping route. The Israeli offense forces or occupation forces confirmed on Tuesday evening that a suspicious aerial target struck an open area near Iliad uh, that it and this was a cruise missile. Yemen's Houthis or Ansarallah claimed responsibility for the missile which crossed in Israeli airspace from the direction of the Red Sea. So there's no damage or injuries, and according to the IDF, the missile was tracked by the Air Force throughout the incident. It marks the first time that a Houthi projectile hit Israeli territory. In previous attacks, missiles and drones launched from Yemen struck neighboring countries or intercepted by air defenses. The IDF said it is further investigating the incident. So they also targeted a fuel tanker in the Red Sea with naval missiles, says the group's military spokesperson, Yahya ya Sari, in a pre-recorded statement on Tuesday. So, this Marshall Islands flagged liquefied petroleum gas tanker was heading to Singapore from Saudi Arabia. Maritime shipping trackers showed the vessel was twice targeted by Houthi fire on March 15th and March 17th. Both attacks missed the vessels with neither damage nor injuries. But, so while there wasn't any impact there, it is important to note that what al Mayadeen has been saying, and the reason why this attack, and it comes in the context of, of the, real, the really huge development that I want to get to. So al Mayadeen, just this past day, so this is being recorded on March 21st, 2024, here, the leader of Ansarallah, Saeed Abdul Malik al Houthi said that they have used a new missile that surprised the Israeli enemy and managed to reach Iliad, bypassing all the U.S. and Israeli interception and surveillance systems. So that is a big deal here. I'm going to just zoom that in here. So that was the breaking news coming from al Mayadeen Lebanese media, that the leader of the Yemeni forces said that they've used a new missile. This was the missile that hit Iliad, bypassing all the U.S and Israeli surveillance and interception systems. So, of course, just a week before this, there were rumors that Yemen, that Ansarallah, has actually uh, come into hypersonic missiles. It's unclear whether they have them or whether they have uh, received them from Iran or Russia. That has not been verified. But nonetheless... This has had a major impact. Don't let the fact that this uh, uh, Iliad strike didn't hurt anyone today, <laughs> that it didn't hurt anyone in that moment. 
because we know from earlier this month of March 2024 that there has been damage done, right? So here's Reuters on March 3rd saying that the Houthis are going to continue to attack these ships, British ships, U.S. ships, that is following the sinking. So they did sink the U.K.-owned vessel Rubemar, um, and that that ship sunk uh, after being struck by an anti-ship ballistic missile fired by the Houthi militants or Ansarallah on February 18th, and that they're going to continue to do so. So there have been vessels damaged. There have been military targets, economic targets. This has caused a, a real shakeup in the region. And the United States, of course, with its so-called allies in the West, have failed in their strikes. They're waging war on Yemen right now to try to prevent this. They have failed dramatically to prevent Ansarallah from continuing what it is doing. So I want to show you before I get to the big news around this issue, I want to show you exactly how dramatic the impact has been, especially for who is actually being targeting, targeted here. And who is that? It's Israel, right? Israel is launching this campaign in Gaza, wildly unpopular around the world, causing massive suffering for the Palestinian population. And here you have the Times of Israel reporting that they have are going to have to lay off half of the workers in Eliot Port amid the Red Sea shipping crisis on Sarala's blockade. Half the workers at Eliot Port are on the verge of losing their jobs after the seaport took a major financial hit due to the crisis in the Red Sea shipping lanes, says Israel's main labor federation. Iliad sits on a northern tip of the Red Sea and was one of the first ports to be affected as shipping firms rerouted vessels to avoid attacks by the Houthis in Yemen. The Historodot Labor Federation, the umbrella organization for hundreds of thousands of public sector workers, says port management has announced it intends to fire half of 120 employees. The dock workers will hold a protest later today on this. Officials at the port did not immediately respond for comment. Iliad, which primarily handles car imports and port and potash exports coming from the Dead Sea pales in, in size compared to Israel's Mediterranean ports, which handle nearly all the country's trade. But Iliad, which sits adjacent to Jordan's only coastal access point at Aqba, offers Israel a gateway to the east without the need to navigate the Suez Canal. And that Iliad's port chief has told Reuters that 85% a drop has been seen in trade activity since the Houthis began their attacks. So this port has essentially become irrelevant, and that has had a major impact on Israel's economy, and rightfully so, because Israel is facing a blockade not so dissimilar to what South Africa faced during the, uh, uh, during the apartheid regime there. But this time, though, uh, there is a massive genocide underway at the same time. So the Houthis on Sarala has answered the call in the biggest way possible. They have been, since the very beginning, using everything that they have. And mind you, socially, economically, it isn't much because on Sarala and, and in particular Yemen, th this force in this country happen to be living in a nation that has been under fire for many, many, many years, over a decade by U.S.-sponsored Saudi Arabia and other forces in the region, including uh, the United States illegally occupying the region in many ways all over, the, uh, all over West Asia. But it has faced war for over a decade and now is standing up to another war, this time Israel's. So with all of that, you would think, well, doesn't this apply? This blockade apply to everyone? Doesn't it apply to all countries using the Red Sea, this wildly important trade hub uh, for energy and all kinds of goods and products that need to reach the rest of the world, that need to reach the European market, that need to reach uh, all across Asia. Well, no, it does not apply to Russia and China. And Bloomberg is reporting this is the breaking news coming out of uh, uh, coming out of the Red Sea, the breaking news 
is that Yemen, Ansarala, has given assurance to Russia and China. And here's the Bloomberg report that Yemen's Houthis tell China and Russia their ships won't be targeted. The Houthis have reached an understanding on safe passage during Oman talks. The move signals world powers as nervousness about maritime attacks. And there's the Rubamar, uh, the British vessel, uh, a photo of it sinking after Ansarallah's attack. So the report says the Yemen-based Houthis have told China and Russia their ships can sail through the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden without being attacked, according to several people with knowledge of the militant group's discussions. China and Russia reached an understanding following talks between their diplomats in Oman and Mohammed Abel Salam, one of the Houthis' top political figures, said the people who asked not to be named discussing private matters. In exchange, the two countries may provide political support to the Houthis and bodies such as the UN Security Council, according to the people. It's not entirely clear how that support would be manifested, but it could, in, could include blocking more resolutions against the group. Spokespeople for the governments of China and Russia, as well as the Houthis, including Abel Salam, didn't reply to Bloomberg's request for comment. So again, take this with a grain of salt, because neither the Russian government, neither its envoys, its officials, or the Chinese have confirmed these reports. But nonetheless, I'll show you why that it's highly likely to be true, whether or not this is something that's happening now, or whether this is simply a verification of a longstanding policy. I'll get to that in a second. So Houthi attacks near the Bab el Mendev Strait, the Iran, so-called Iran-backed group, that's what they always say about Ansarallah, have attacked multiple commercial and military ships in the southern Red Sea in the Gulf of Aden since mid-November. While the Houthis have already signaled Moscow and Beijing's assets would not be targeted, the talks underscore the increased nervousness among world powers about the group's missile and drone attacks in and around the southern Red Sea since mid-November. The Houthis and Islamist groups say they're targeting ships linked to Israel, the U.S., and the U.K., Yet they appear had to have misidentified some vessels, and Russia and China may have wanted stronger assurances from the group. This month, the Houthis hit the True Confidence, a bulk commodities carrier, causing the first deaths since they started their maritime attacks. The Houthis said the vessel was American. It used to be owned by Los Angeles-based Oak Tree Capital, according to a person with knowledge of the matter, but a new non-U.S. company has taken it on. Separately, missiles exploded near a ship hauling Russian oil near Yemen in late January. It happened a few days after a spokesperson for the Houthis told the Russian newspaper that Russian and Chinese merchant ships need not fear attacks. So again, this is about reassurances. And it makes a lot of sense that there would need to be reassurances because for all of uh, Ansarallah's capabilities, for all of Yemen's capabilities, of course, this is not something that is easy to verify. And so mistakes are made. And indeed, mistakes could have been made in this process. But again, all of this is hard to verify, given the propensity for the Western mainstream media to smear on Sarala. Ostensibly, the assaults are to put pressure on Israel to stop its war in Gaza against uh, Hamas, which is not what this is about. But this is what they say it's about, though many analysts doubt the Houthis would end their campaign in the event of a ceasefire permanent peace deal, which, again, that's the propaganda here. They're trying to tell you that Ansarallah is the aggressor when really they're responding to an actual genocide uh, um, against uh, a majority Arab population in Gaza, <laughs> the Palestinian people. And mind you, there's no reason to believe they wouldn't stop if it were to stop, right? But this is how they, the mainstream media curries favor for Israel's war. The waterways, including the Bab el-Mendeb Strait connecting the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, are crucial for the global economy, and normally around 30% of container cargo flows through them. They also handle a large proportion of oil and liquefied natural gas flows. Since the attack started, most Western shipping firms have avoided the strait and are instead going around southern Africa. That's adding days and significant freight costs, mind you, hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes <clears throat> for one trip, onto these journeys between Asia and Europe. Companies from China and Russia haven't announced they're avoiding the area, and ship tracking data shows many of them still send their ships through them. So here they're just going to talk about how China is and Russia are diplomatic and economic partners of Iran. And here they still say that the Ansarallah retains plenty of independence from Iran, despite the fact that they're always calling them Iran-backed. It says they support the Houthis, Iran does but they make their own decisions on political and military affairs. All right, so they talk about they survived the bombings and all of that. The main news here, though, 
the bombings from Saudi Arabia, etc. But the main news here is that Russia and China have struck a deal with Ansar Allah, or at least reportedly so, that demonstrates another assurance for Russia and China that their ships won't be targeted. And why is that? Well, it's because it's Russia and China uh, who is not participating in this bloody campaign that Israel's waging in Gaza right now. It's the United States. It's the collective West. It is all ships affiliated with them. They are the ones who are participating. So they are the ones who are suffering the brunt of this blockade. Now, I want to show you, though, that this isn't necessarily a um, a new development. As Bloomberg said, and here is a report from Voice of America from earlier this year. It says, Ansarala Houthis won't target Chinese and Russian ships in the Red Sea. So this is from the CIA, uh, essentially mouthpiece, Voice of America. So the Ansarala said that Chinese and Russian vessels will have safe passage through the Red Sea, said Mohammed al Qaidi, a member of the political leadership of the group, said in an interview with the Russian outlet uh, Izvestia that the shipping lanes around Yemen are safe for ships uh, uh, from China and Russia as long as those vessels aren't connected with Israel. They said that they're acting in solidarity with Palestinians amid the war against Hamas militants in Gaza and have carried out more than 30 attacks in the Red Sea. So that was in January. More attacks have occurred since there. So since then. So the Red Sea route is vital for shipping between Europe and Asia, carrying about 15% of the world's maritime traffic. So again, this is not necessarily a new policy, but it's one that is being verified by and validated by the uh, Ansar Allah forces with Russia and China. And why is this so huge? Well, for one, it means that given that the Elliott port was reached, given that there are also reports that Yemen, the Ansar Allah forces, have reached the Indian Ocean as well, targeting cargo and tankers, etc. It's quite clear that Ansar Allah has pretty significant capabilities. And it's also quite clear that they're not stopping, that the United States Operation Prosperity Guardian and all of the Western vassal states that joined in can't halt what Yemen, what Ansar Allah is doing. They can't halt their black blockade. This blockade is going to continue and it's likely going to escalate given that now Yemen in a first, this is the first time that Yemen and Ansar Allah has targeted Israel directly. So it's likely that this is going to escalate. And so it was important, obviously, for Russia and China to get assurances that it wasn't going to be their ships that were going to be targeted, whether mistakes happen or they don't. Russia and China are continuing to use the Red Sea for trade. So there are also, uh, perhaps, in front of the show, Pepe Escobar, uh, did intimate uh, such that there's also the possibility, okay? Here's what Pepe Escobar had to say on Twitter, all right? Pepe Escobar said the Houthi-China-Russia triad is immense with the deal reached in Oman. Not only are they defeating the lassocracy, they have Russia-China strategic partnership on their side. The empire moves its puny pawn, fr- puny pawn France Russia and China counterattack with Ansarallah. That's how you play chess. The Houthis assured Beijing and Moscow their ships can sail through the Bab el Mendeb, Red Sea, and Gulf of Adan with no problems. In exchange, Russia and China offer political support. The road is paid for Yemen to be considered as a serious candidate for the next BRICS Plus expansion in October in Kazan. So again, the implications of this could be even more immense than just this blockade continuing. It means that Yemen has the support of Russia and China, that these two forces are not going to go against Yemen's political stand. And that gives the rest of the region an opportunity also to continue to take a stand in support of Gaza. And believe me, right now, Gaza needs all the support it can get. And it is getting it. It's not a hopeless situation. As terrible as things are, as the United States 
is rubber stamping. There are no red lines on Israel. Rafa is under assault. Uh, they're raiding hospitals still in the north. I take it as the fact that Israel still has to fight in the north as a clear sign that Israel is not achieving its so-called military objectives, that all it is doing is massacring the population. But you have over and over again, you have a reports. I think the Islamic resistance in Iraq has struck an electrical grid inside of Tel Aviv. You have uh, uh, increased missile fire from Hezbollah to the north with Israeli military forces, uh, Israeli defense minister, etc., all talking about a broader war with Hezbollah because they know that it's untenable for the situation in the so-called north of Israel to maintain the current situation as it is because it is a losing one. So Israel knows that its campaign, despite how it looks in terms of optics. Most of the world are, is paying attention, and rightfully so, to the massive suffering being incurred with the hubris on the side of the so-called pro-Israel forces, the United States, the empire's forces, the collective West. They're all thumping their chests saying, well, well, Israel's winning. Well, on the other side, you have people who support Palestine, and rightfully so, looking at this saying, well, Palestinians could not be losing any more than they are now. But I want to put out there that whether it's Hezbollah, whether we're talking about the Islamic resistance, but whether and also whether we're talking about Yemen, when we're looking at all these forces together in the axis of resistance, we are seeing a really, uh, I think, steadfast and pretty mighty and powerful campaign in solidarity with Gaza that is having a real tangible impact on Israel, on the world economy, on the forces that are attempting to subdue and suppress the self-determination of the Palestinian people and really of the entire region because that's what this is about, full stop at the end of the day. So we have to look at what Yemen is doing with, I think, uh, 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 bright eyes, with the understanding that this is not going to stop. This is something we need to be actually in support of because the pressure, right, the propaganda campaign, the labeling and smearing of Ansarallah is just bandits as people who are just terrorists who have no ideals. You heard Bloomberg themselves sneak in there that they believe that Ansarallah is simply uh, going to refuse to stop its blockade if the campaign in Israel, if the campaign in Gaza is uh, stopped, if there's a ceasefire, that it wouldn't be enough and that they would continue to keep going. Well, right now, Yemen is at war. Yemen has been essentially invaded. There are U.S. forces, uh, special forces operating in Yemen. There are uh, uh, attacks by the air uh, regularly against Yemen by the so-called coalition. And uh, uh, the assault on Gaza continues. So Yemen is, is at war. It's taken a stance. Much of the region the axis of resistance, at least, has taken a stance. And it is those forces that have not, which continue to allow uh, the motive force of history to be dictated by Israel and really by the United States, by an invading force, a foreign entity, an imperial force. That is what is at stake here in Yemen. Yemen, Yemen, a country that has been so stripped and stolen of its wealth, of its capacity for economic development, has been so impoverished, as well as so violently assaulted and terrorized by foreign forces for so many decades, but in particular the last 10 years, it is Yemen that has answered the call for Gaza, and now it has hit Israel on Israeli, so-called Israeli territory, and it has assured Russia and China safe passage through the Red Sea indefinitely, setting up a political nightmare for the empire that the United States in particular was not expecting until the October 7th military campaign from Hamas was launched. It was not expecting to have to relaunch a military assault uh, or escalate a military assault in the Middle East, in West Asia, as it has had to do since then. And uh, this quagmire is going to get a lot deeper for the United States, for Israel. And 
uh, we would be remiss. We would be mistaken to bet against Yemen and to bet against the acts of resistance in the final analysis because history is on their side. They are on the right side of history. And this blockade will be a big part of turning the tide regionally and globally, not just on the side of the Palestinian people, but on the broader arc and broader course of justice. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. I appreciate all of your support. This channel, however, needs your help. I am seeking to make this channel more sustainable in the long term and upgrade necessary equipment to ensure that this work continues onward and makes progress to give you all of the geopolitical analysis that you all deserve. For that reason, I'm asking you to become a member of my Patreon community at patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. You can find that link in the video description or in the pinned comment below. For whatever amount you choose to give, just know you are supporting independent media that you can't find anywhere else. Thank you so much, and I look forward to the next video. Thank you.